Triple H comes out. He just, uh, dude, just gags about WrestleMania and the the gross. And we broke every record that existed. Over a billion views on social. Excellent a, shareholder value. A I billion mean. views on social. Okay, so that's that. That would be, of course, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, just everything combined. Did, did you hear the stats they put out this week that um, there are two million WWE fans worldwide? Based on what justification, I guess. How do you they know, how do they quantify fan? What's a fan? Um, anyone with a heartbeat that's met someone with a W and a W <laughs> and an E in any of their relatives' names. Mm. I, I find it interesting. How how do you know what what, what constitutes a fan? I, are they counting viewers? Are they counting you know merchandise sales? Like, how do you get to that number? How do you okay. get to that statistic? Okay, well, would you are are, are you a fan? I, I would classify myself as a fan, yes. Okay. Is your mom a fan of you? Yeah. Then by connection, she's a fan of WWE. I don't know about that. Does your mom have friends? <laughs> no, I mean re- seriously. How I don't know how they get to get two billion. To- I don't know how they get to two billion, and they only had uh, two million at their peak subscribed to the WWE Network. I don't know how they get to this number when uh, I'm. Th- I'm thinking it's every single YouTube clip, every single YouTube view, every single TikTok view, every single you know uh, Instagram Reels view, every single tweet, maybe uh, or, or or Twitter view of a, of a video that they put out. All that combined, and, and of course, you know whatever Peacock numbers they have, all that combined. Sure, my total two billion. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, that's all like, in the past. Like, 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 like the idea is that what? Like, um, what is this? What is this number? How many people are on the, the planet? Eight. Eight billion. Okay, so a a third. <laughs> what, are, what are you talking about? Like, fourth. A, a fourth are fans of WWE. A fourth of the human population <laughs> watch WrestleMania. The, several, there, there's the mentality countries. in WWE that would sound like God. That sounds like the majority of the world are not fans of ours. Oh yeah, not not big <laughs> it's enough. Too low. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not the uh, I'm not Ernst and Young or whoever they are relying on for their uh, their data. So Hunter is now looking to the future, and in a few short weeks, the draft will take place. And then Michael Cole repeated it in a few short weeks. So it sounds to me they have not settled on the dates yet. Okay. All this right. was our, our term that we were going to use. A few short weeks. So the draft will take place. Everyone's eligible. It will be the biggest one yet. I would have loved for him to promote. It's going to be top five of all time coming up in a few week, short weeks. And it's going to change the game. And then he introduced Rhea Ripley, who's also changing the game. Mr. Segway, Hunter. <laughs> and she comes out with the Judgment Day. So the draft way, it's about time that we get to... Can you imagine some of the, the Raw talent on SmackDown and vice versa? I mean, <laughs> think of the dream matches we, we could see. <laughs> I, I I don't know what what I'm going to do. It's going to mess up my whole sleep sleep routine. You know, seeing, uh, what, Seth Rollins on a Friday? I, I, don't, know, I don't know how I'm going to function. You know, um, I, I'm sure these shows will do fine uh, viewership wise. I I think they could have learned something from these last six months where they've pretty much waived the uh, the brand split. And I find the shows to be way more interesting when you have everybody at your disposal and you can yeah. make it like to me, they. I, I just I don't know. I, I understand why maybe the networks want the, the separate rosters and such, and mm-hmm. I understand the reasons for it. But in practice, like they're doing great viewership for both shows year over year. And to me, it's like, I think what they're doing now is just fine. Um, but I guess we will see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's telling that like, even under a Levesque regime, like the, they didn't really respect the draft to, or sorry, the, the, what is it? The brand split way too, uh, all too much. I think there you could do it was, something. It was the wild card rule they used each week. Oh, whatever. Like, I think you, there's there's some things you can do like maybe you can maybe say anything after the rumble you know it's it, any anything goes it's it's playoff season it's wrestlemania season anybody can go to 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 any other show um or maybe there are specific patches throughout the the course of the year where like for this particular week anybody can show up make those maybe feel like special occasions um but yeah I would probably do away with it I think they might like sort of like the 
beyond the network demands, maybe they like having the structure of they they're able to, for instance, tell the story of like a Rey Mysterio being able to stay on a SmackDown to get away from a Dominic. Not that they fully respected it, you know, throughout the course of that entire thing, but at the very least, that it offers that potential. Um, house shows might you know benefit from something like this as well if they're even doing brand split house shows at this point. Um, but also but, yeah. that serial program, like to me, it's you either sort of disregard the brand split or like the buildup to me really lacks if you are really staying true to this uh, brand split. Not that I believe that they will. I don't know. I'm just at a place right now where I just think it's, it's better shows with the current model and mm. gives you a lot more flexibility. And f- yeah, for a week you can do these draft shows and there's something to build your television towards and they'll, they'll probably spike numbers. Although I, I don't know by how much, to be quite honest, I think people are, you know, it's not like we've had hard and fast rosters. So I don't think there's that sort of anticipation of changes to the shows. Um, but we'll see how well they they promote this and what they have uh, planned. Because I think we're at a point where the, the it's just the flexibility has been showing and their viewership has done really well with this. Like, think about the more interest you've had by Sami Zayn being able to be back and forth and to have, um, you know, other other top acts that you can bounce back and forth between both shows when, when they were gaining the most steam, like Cody helping out SmackDown and vice versa. Sure. Yeah. There, uh, I guess there, there certain parts, so some of those segments did feel like they were special occasions and, and, you know, Cody showing up on a SmackDown, maybe to some people felt like it was a, a unique occasion because there is at least like a very loose structure of a, of a brand split that exists. Um, but we we've been used to this now for what five years, six years. So it, it it's it's a very loose split. Uh, I'll say. Well, Ripley cuts her promo. WrestleMania was the night sports entertainment changed forever because of what she did, destroying and dethroning Charlotte. And now it's time for everyone to rise from mommy. She's the biggest star, the most.